Hey guys, looking forward to sharing with you my thoughts and impressions of the BenQ HT5550 today. The BenQ HT5550 is an 8.3 million pixel true 4K HDR projector. Did I get all that? And so I'm looking forward to going through, as I usually do, with an iPhone walking around the cam, the not the camera, walking around the projector and sharing with you guys what I think of this projector. It's an awesome 4K HDR projector. So this has been a long time coming. I'm sorry that this has been delayed, but life just got in the way and here we are today. So let's dive into it. As I usually do on these reviews, I'm gonna walk around the projector for a little bit with my iPhone, sharing my overall thoughts and impressions of the hardware, the market fit, high level overview of what this projector represents. Then we're gonna take a break, set some on-screen stuff up, and then we'll get to the conclusion of whether or not you should buy this projector. All right, so let's get into some of the specs of this projector, the HT5550. It's a 4K HDR projector. And a little bit on 4K, this is a true 4K, 8.3 million uniquely represented pixels on screen. It does this by shifting its native 1080p chip four times. This is a DLP unit. And so you're going to get really good motion smoothness. Um, as far as rainbow effects are concerned, for those of you who are wondering that, this has an RGB, RGB color wheel. And so I'm not personally affected by rainbow effect, but for those of you who are, RGB, RGB, as well as the color coding on this specific unit tends to be greatly reduced for those sensitive to it. I haven't heard of anyone who's sensitive to rainbow effect on the HT5550. Now on HDR, let's talk about that for just a minute. I recently reviewed the BenQ HT3550, and at the time I said it was the best HDR I have seen on a projector due in large part to its auto tone mapping. Now the HT5550 using the same um, auto tone mapping technology, it also has a improved dynamic iris relative to the HT3550 and then those custom algorithms that we were talking about with the HT3550, all of those work in concert to create a very, very good HDR image, better than the HT3550. I'm gonna to get to my conclusion on HDR in just a bit, but spoiler there is that this is among the very best 4K HDR I have seen on a projector. Now, what was really interesting for me when BenQ introduced this projector and why I got excited is because it filled a niche that BenQ wasn't really represented in before. The HT3550 launched at $1,500. And then if you wanted a more refined 4K HDR projector from BenQ, you were looking at either the HT8060 or 9060, both of which cost anywhere from six to $8,000. Now with this, what you're getting with the HT5550 is a nice black finish which I think that the overall design, BenQ typically is very good at their design, and this is no exception. Nice black matte finish, which looks just perfectly right at home in an upscale home theater, and it's not too big. Um, you know, I'm gonna be doing a shootout of the Epson 5050UB, but you can see just the side profile how much bigger the 5050 UB is compared to the HT5550. And for some, that obtrusiveness uh, is going to be a detractor. Now, some other things on the HT5550 that are very good relative to other DLPs in its space, as well as even allowing it to compete with the Epsons, is the placement flexibility. So here we have, let's see if we can get that, lens shift. Lots of it. So I think I'm quoting this correctly. It's plus or minus uh, vertical lens shift is plus or minus 63% and horizontal lens shift is 27 plus or minus percent. And so I'll just show you that it's very smooth in its actuation. I'll go plus here. And so I'm not doing the full range here just for the sake of time, but it's very smooth and very easy to get the image from side to side. See if we can get that focused on the screen. Here we go, side to side. Very easy to get that projector image focused as well as where you want it. And so placement flexibility is actually really good. 
Um, here are the controls for zoom as well as the, come on, focus. Zoom as well as focus. Um, there you go. <laughs> right there. And so I'm not going to mess that up. But right here, you twist this ring here for the focus. And then this overlay is the zoom. So it's an all new lens. Uh, the lens is very good, very, very sharp. The sharpness and focus un uniformity, as we're talking about the lens, is really very good. Um, and so I. As far as the hardware is concerned, it's a more mature, more grown up unit compared to the HT3550. And the HT3550 is no slouch. I really like the HT3550 with its, like the the rear looks almost as good as the front. The front has no like spillage coming out of the front. It does a very good job. Uh, so I don't have any complaints for what the HT3550 is, but the HT5550 is just, it's got some meat to it, you know, and I think it looks really good on a ceiling uh, if I'm being objective. I guess that would be subjective. All right, so let's talk about in and out. We've got USB media reader capabilities. So if you wanted to throw some H.264, H.265 files on it, H.265 is not officially supported in documentation, but I have tested it and it works. So if you have some um, high efficiency video codec files, HDR, things like that, it works pretty well. I don't see the USB media reader being used as much as the HT3550 simply just because this is going to be used pretty much 100% of the time in more of a dedicated theater with surround sound. So there's no onboard speakers anymore. So if you did want to bring this in the backyard, I mean, you can, I guess. Uh, it has the optical out uh, as far as audio is concerned, as well as the 3.5 millimeter audio out. And so if you wanted to use that for your audio, you could from a USB media reader plugged in. And so it's nice that that flexibility is there. It also has 2.5 amp power for uh, Roku streaming stick, Fire TV stick, things like that, if you wanted to use that as well. So that's there once the projector is powered on. The These are actually, I've, I've used these buttons more than I have on any other BenQ projector. They're actually pretty darn nice in terms of the, the fill of the buttons and where they're located. And so that was a nice touch. I did like the buttons on the back. And this just as well is just another touch that this is, this is more like the HT8060 versus the HT3550, just in terms of the build. We're going to talk about some on-screen stuff as well, but overall, um, I'm a big fan as far as the hardware goes. And so let's dive in to on-screen performance. All right, so first and foremost, I know that it's really hard to reproduce what I'm seeing on a video, but one thing as it relates to HDR that the HT5550 does very well is a lot of things. I mean, this is a scene that's very hard to reproduce in HDR because of the warmth in the scene. HDR typically tends to uh, overdo the saturation of reds and oranges. And it's doing that against a very dark black background and dark gray in the shadows. And another thing that this scene highlights on Thor Ragnarok is the shadow detail. And so and I've seen projectors, uh, especially last year's crop of the 0.47 inch chips. This is a new updated 0.47 uh, DLP DMD, which gets sort of the gray border and all that. So what this is doing is it's leveraging the dynamic iris, but more importantly, that dynamicity to the iris and as well as the overall HDR image is the auto tone mapping is making sure that really no scene is too dim and for the most part HDR is even brighter than just standard SDR content due to how the auto tone mapping works. And so you can see here like the flesh tone even in a dark warm scene is actually really good. The sharpness of the chains, the lava in the background, the shadow detail, the rocks, it's a very nice image. I can't really play it or else my video is going to be taken down on YouTube, but I'm going to thumb through some different scenes here. Here's another one. Um, again, 
the clipping that is done, whoops, the clipping that's done on this image is usually pretty bad and a lot of details lost in the detail in the chest and like the red coming out. Um, I'm seeing a little bit of clipping on my iPhone screen. I'm not seeing it on my actual projector screen, but the detail image on the chair, the throne, there's really no part of the image that is just crushed by the dynamic iris and what the auto tone mapping is doing. Again, here's another close up, really good uh, flesh tone, even though we're, we're in a very dark scene, really good sharpness. Overall, the shadow gradation is very good. So HDR on this projector is really, really good. And this is, you guys, this is out of the box. And so, so here's another scene of Thor Ragnarok that shortly follows the beginning opening scene. And again, I feel like the overall brightness, the color, the details in the clouds, the details in the intricate Asgard uh, architecture in the statue is just a very, very well balanced picture. I'll thumb through a few different screenshots here as well, but and this this is a really good scene to highlight some of the, um, you know how this handles flesh tone, and how this handles different colors on screen in relation to that flesh tone. So um, here is Anthony Hopkins and Loki. So uh, let's go back just a few. So the overall flesh tone. It's a little bit warmer on my iPhone that I'm seeing than it is on my screen, but it does a very good job with flesh tone. Again, this is out of the box, right? This is the best out of the box 4K HDR image I've ever seen. Just super, super balanced. And it's actually pretty darn bright as well. So HDR is very good. Flesh tone is good. Color is good. And then we're going to get into some settings and talk a little bit more about that but hopefully you guys can see uh, a little bit get an idea of, of uh, the on-screen performance of the HT5550 here. Alright so let's go to some of the on-screen settings now the menu is pretty similar to it's very similar it's, it's pretty much identical to the HT3550 and what settings are available and all that so I'm going to go to advanced. The only setting that I changed that was not default was HDR brightness. I have a 160 inch screen and this I was really surprised and pleasantly surprised to find out that even though this is 200 lumens less than the HT3550, this is plenty bright for my 160 inch screen. So I put it at plus one. Plus zero is actually not bad. It increases the overall contrast of the image, but I think a good balance of the image. And the nice thing with the HDR brightness is that the tone remaps itself, so you're not losing too much contrast with that increased brightness as well. Now color temperature, you have a few different settings there. Color management. So there's a lot of customizations within the advanced settings here. Cinema Master, I really like the Pixel Enhancer 4K. I think that that has a really nice effect at about 8. And if uh, I were to draw any comparisons to how the uh, Pixel Enhancer 4K setting affects the image, it's pretty similar to how uh, the little Darby Darblet, if you have seen those, had those. Um, I had one, and I'd say that that's pretty pretty close to the most similar effect that you could have from the Pixel Enhancer 4K setting. Let's talk about Motion Enhancer 4K now that we're here. So this does Creative Frame Interpolation or CFI. Um, BenQ calls it MEMC. And so it has a low, medium, high setting. I only recommend this setting on sports. And it does have a pretty nice effect and some people like it. Um, if you don't mind that slight soap opera effect, I leave it off pretty much all the time but it's there if you want it. Color Enhancer is nice in SDR. I'm gonna talk more about that when we go to SDR content. Dynamic Iris, so I'm gonna turn the Dynamic Iris on and off. So it does, you can kind of see how the image changes just a little bit, but the Dynamic Iris, um, you know, if you left it off, you will see a brighter, 
or I guess a higher gray level or black level on full dark scenes. I leave it on and you know I don't notice the pumping too much. It is a little bit slower than what I noticed on the HT3550, but not too bad. As far as noise is concerned, with the um, you know music completely silent and if this is mounted like right above your head, you might hear it going to work just a little bit. I've never noticed it with content on the screen. So, you know, your mileage is going to vary based on how sensitive you are to picking up on the noise that a dynamic iris would make. But I'm just here saying that you probably not a big deal. Um, and then wide color gamut. This is going to turn on the color filter. And, you know, it doesn't dim too much. And that's kind of what I was expecting going into the HT5550 is that this is producing a very color accurate. This is where you're going to get 100% P3 coverage. But with it off, I think that the main selling point of this projector, honestly, is the DCI P3 coverage with this off. So what they did with the RGB RGB color wheel is that they introduced a new pure coating on it. It's the same pure coating technology that they use on the 8060 and 9060. And that actually gets the picture to 96% or 95%, should I say, P3 coverage. Now, if you are going to sit here and tell me that you can notice a difference in 5% P3 coverage, then that's fine. And I know that some people will, some video files will, but I'm just here telling you for me, with my 160 inch screen, I prefer the slightly brighter image with still really, really good color on the screen with it off. Now, light mode, you have normal, economic, smart eco. Just like the HT3550, you can't put this into smart eco as well as have the dynamic iris on at the same time. So just keep that in mind. Smart, smart eco is leveraging the dynamic black TI technology on the software side, so it actually dims the lamp instead of um, clamps down the iris. So some other settings, um, again, default is in most cases going to be very, very good. Um, the color on this thing is just so darn good and the sharpness. Now let's talk about contrast. Um, now the contrast on this projector is an improvement on the HT3550. It's not going to like knock some black level enthusiast socks off. The Epson 5050 UB, for example, has better contrast as well as black levels. You just aren't going to get those inky blacks with a DLP. It's just the nature of the technology. So there's going to be trade-offs. Now the contrast and black levels are a lot better than last year. You know, the letter bars that I'm seeing on screen, I, I can hardly see them with my 1.0 gain screen. And the overall perceived contrast on the on screen, like the hair, the shadow to the left of the couch, the robes, like the contrast on screen is very good with the content on it. With the dynamic iris, when that clamps down, the contrast improves. And so I'd say the dynamic contrast, you're going to want to leave that dynamic iris on, is my opinion. Now with it off, the native contrast hovers around 1,000, 1,000 uh, to 1 native contrast. Uh, which, you know, based on last year's 4K DLP chips is uh, is a bit of improvement. It's about 50% improvement compared to last year's DLP 4K chips. Um, and so where this projector really shines is the sharpness. And there was a scene, you know, the, the Epson 5050, I'll do this in my shootout video, but the Epson 5050 UB and the... You know, I, I turned it on and I could see the screen door effect. I could see individual pixels and everyone says, you know, it's so much better. Uh, but then I turned it on and it, I, don't know, I could see the pixels because it's only shifting 1080, uh, the 1080p image twice. So there's only 4 million individually represented pixels on screen. The HT5550 does 8.3 million pixels on the screen and the lens it just has a super sharp very evenly focused um, the focus uniformity is very good on it and so I don't know I, 
I have an image, and I'm going to put this up in, in editing here. So this image of this lizard on this YouTube video that I found, it's it's pretty apparent as far as the sharpness goes. All right, so let's talk about 3D. And so 3D is going to be handled just like it is in the HT3550. And so I just went through, I have a bunch of side-by-side -side content in my Plex library. And so what you need to do on 3D is you need to make sure that your output player, this is only for side-by-side -side and top-bottom 3D content, you just need to make sure that your display is set to 1080p uh, resolution instead of 4K. So once you do that, get into your 3D content and then just press play. All right, so the 3D content is now on the screen. So when you're at this point and you're watching your own personal library, just like the HT3550, you go to 3D mode, side by side, click it, and you're good to go. So now it is showing the 3D image here. All right, and there you go. So the 3D image on this projector, it's it's good. I have a 160 inch screen and I think it was just about the right amount of brightness. Um, and so most people that are gonna have screens around 120, 130, maybe 100 inches. And this will be plenty bright for your 3D setup. And the color again, that good color is going to transcend into your 3D viewing as well. So really, really nicely done by BenQ in the 3D implementation. Now one more thing to mention about 3D is that if you're dealing with a 3D Blu-ray, you just pop in the Blu-ray and you're good to go. Um, so you can leave everything in 4K, it'll just automatically pop into frame packing mode on your 3D Blu-ray player. All right, so this is 4K SDR content. This is a very, very well done video by Jacob and Katie Schwartz on their YouTube channel. I love it, it's the Costa Rica 4K. Uh, this is playing on the Shield TV, so it's not an HDR, but if I had a Roku, this would be HDR. This is 4K SDR at 60 frames per second. And I wanted to use this to show off the SDR chops on this projector. So while this is playing here, um, I'll go into a few different settings. The picture modes. Okay, so you've got bright, vivid TV, cinema, and digital cinema. And then the user mode. So um, Gregory from Passion Home Cinema put out some really good settings from the user setting that I'm going to share and link to. But um, I'll get to that. So bright, just like the HT3550, a very green kind of unusable image mode I wouldn't recommend it but it's there if you need it vivid TV is actually pretty good if you want to watch TV so non-color um, critical viewing the color is actually pretty good and it does put out more lumens relative to the cinema and digital cinema modes so yeah I mean it, it's it's a really nice image on the cinema, this is the one that I preferred before Gregory. He's known as Crane and AVS Forms. This is the mode I would use most of the time. And so to me, this is out of the box the best mode for SDR. It's going to give you the best combination of brightness, color, uh, as well as just, I don't know, just an overall balanced image. Digital cinema, this is going to pull over the wide color gamut filter. And so it dims down the image, but not by much, to be honest. And the color accuracy is just a lot more natural. I'm going to go out of that. But you can see just, I mean, the color is so good on this. You know, I went to New York City to the launch event of this projector here in the States. And we had a 170 inch screen that we walked into when this was uh, being demoed. There was a, I think it was uh, Infinity War, Avengers Infinity War, as well as La La Land. 
and I talked to the BenQ rep, I'm like, hey, can you fire up a wide color gamut mode? Just because I thought there was no way that it was producing that bright of an image with the wide color gamut filter on. He's like, oh no, you know, the, it's actually just default settings, the wide color gamut mode's on. Really? And so this projector does a very good job with its wide color gamut filter mode. The colors are just so good on this out of the box. And then I'm going to go to the user mode here. Now, the settings Gregory put out there are good. I'm going to thumb through them here so you can see, but I think it's this combination here of the brightness and contrast. So brightness 45, you can see there what those settings are. And then moving over to All right, so the BenQ gamma selection is going to put a little bit more punch and brightness to the image. I think in his settings he had 2.2 as the preferred gamma selection. And to my eye, the BenQ gamma selection does just create a little bit more pop in the image. Just It just makes it pop a little bit more. And so I left it at that. Color temperature, you can see here uh, the different settings. So red gain 101, you can go through those 101.99. 103, you can take a screenshot of this. Those are custom settings. And then all of these were left, I believe, at default. Cinema Master 8. See those settings there? Light mode, normal. So this is a very good image. I mean, so let me end on this, the HT5550. Is it worth the $2,500 price tag? Is it worth an extra $1,000 compared to the HT3550? I really like the HT3550. And I think that this yeah, I mean, it's better in every way, shape, and form compared to the HT3550. But it it's not a huge leap better. I think that everything that the HT5550 does is 20% better here, 30% better there, 10% better here. Where it really puts the ribbon on the package is the hardware, the placement flexibility, the lens quality. Um, the lens shift and placement flexibility, the color wheel. I mean, it's it's just a better package. And so I think that the on-screen performance of the HT5550 gets us about 80% there to its price tag relative to the HT3550. And then it's the lens shift, the placement flexibility. Everything else that this has going for it that gets us to that $2,500 price tag. And so if you have a need for the placement flexibility, if you want an image that I feel is about 20% better than the HT3550, then definitely spring for the HT5550. The colors on this are the best I've seen on a projector and the image is just fantastic out of the box. So I'm going to be doing a shootout with the Epson 5050UB and talking a little bit more about how these two compare. And so look out for that video, but until then, let me know what your guys' thoughts are of this video and what your thoughts of the HD5550 are in the comments, and I'll try to get to any questions that you guys have in the comments below.